Galaxy? <sighs> Infinity stars? How do you have these? Oh, we actually got a lot of those. <laughs> Some of the guys use them as paperweights. Welcome back everyone. This is going to be my new Marvel Loki video explaining why the Infinity Stones don't work anymore. Loki's giving away Infinity Stones like they're party favors. Who wants a new paperweight for their desk? So Marvel did just make the Infinity Stones useless. I'll explain why they don't work and more about how the timekeepers were actually able to do that. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'm doing videos for all the episodes and I'm doing a giveaway for Disney Plus memberships and all my Marvel videos. All you have to do to enter that is be a subscriber and let me know which of those Infinity Stones you would take if you could get them to work again. But careful for spoilers from everything that happened in Loki episode one if you have not seen the episode yet. During the episode, after almost having to explain what a fish is to Casey here, like I will gut you like a fish, what's a fish? Casey is the name of the desk worker here, played by Eugene Cordero, who was also manning the front desk when they first brought him in, sort of setting up the big Tesseract twist, like, oh, what's this? It seems stupid. Loki forces him to give the Tesseract back with the idea that he'll just open another portal and escape judgment, it'll make a clean getaway. But then they reveal what else he's got in that little lost and found style desk drawer and it shakes Loki to his very core. He is horrified, like his whole world just crumbles around him. This is really when he's meant to hit rock bottom. Not only are there countless priceless artifacts from the Marvel movies and from real life and just in general there, like the Honus Wagner card that's worth over $3 million if you're a big baseball fan. They have all six Infinity Stones, and in most cases, duplicates multiple copies of Infinity Stones. Like, Loki could theoretically make two Infinity Gauntlets, which normally would make him the ultimate power in the universe, just double fisting Infinity Gauntlets. But instead, he winds up acknowledging the TVA is actually the greatest power or might be the greatest power in the universe because they're treating the Infinity Stones as if they're completely worthless. In fact, the way Casey talks about it, he says, oh, we get these all the time. But the whole drawer itself is just meant to show you how little they care for what you would normally consider to be extremely valuable and rare items. Like if you or I found the Honus Wagner card sitting in the desk drawer there, we'd just have a heart attack because it's worth so much money. Loki has a small heart attack looking at the treasure chest of Infinity Stones. So after the episode aired, a lot of people saw this scene and yes, it is meant to be kind of funny because they're playing on the whole fish scene with Casey. It's just meant to be a comedic scene in general. But a lot of you on my episode one video were commenting, wondering if this was Marvel trampling on Black Widow's sacrifice and Iron Man's sacrifice in Avengers Endgame. Like if Marvel is saying the Infinity Stones don't matter anymore, what did Black Widow die for? What did Iron Man die for? So just to clear this up, you're at least half right there. Marvel is using this scene to make Loki feel very small and insignificant, taking the wind out of his sails. And yes, they are using it in a meta way to say that the Infinity Stones won't be a thing anymore in Marvel Phase 4 movies. Like, we spent 10 plus years during the Infinity Saga movies treating the Infinity Stones as if they were the most important thing in existence. This big MacGuffin across 22 plus films. Now Kevin Feige and the Marvel movies want to move on to the next big thing, move past the Infinity Stones. And also say that no, Marvel villains won't be traveling back in time again, repeating the Thanos plot, repeating the Avengers plot, and just trying to assemble another Infinity gauntlet and just do the exact same thing over and over again. So they needed some way to logically explain how that was not possible anymore and sort of wink from behind the camera and tell fans, no, we're not going to go back to these in a big way anytime soon. But here's the big twist with the TVA and the timekeepers. The way the TVA is able to make it seem like these infinity stones don't work anymore isn't because they're more powerful than the infinity stones. The infinity stones themselves haven't changed fundamentally. They're still crazy powerful. This is where we get into a lot of the smoke and mirrors aspect behind the timekeepers, like Wizard of Oz style, who's really behind the curtain here, what's really going on? Yes, the timekeepers do have advanced control of time travel and time manipulation, making it seem as if they're powerful as gods, but they're not actual gods, not in the way the one above all in the Marvel Universe is the true god, or even in the way that Thor is a lesser god in the MCU. There was a joke about this earlier in the episode when Loki's on trial asking to speak to the timekeepers, gods to gods, and Judge Renslayer just says they're far too busy to meet with him. But that was kind of a misdirect. It was more foreshadowing for the Wizard of Oz style reveal, dark twist, timekeepers are not gods. So the way that the TVA is able to make it seem like they could cancel the Infinity Stone's power or suppress them is actually because the timekeeper citadel here exists in its own separate pocket dimension outside the normal flow of time, what you would consider the normal multiverse. So when you say beings like the Shumagorth, the many angled ones were born in the void before the existence of the universe, before the Big Bang, before the multiverse was created, 
the Timekeeper Citadel exists in a space like this outside of what you would consider the normal multiverse, which is how they're protected from changes in the timeline. That's why nobody in this place got snapped when Thanos assembled the Infinity Gauntlet in Infinity War. That's how it's so easy for them to make decisions like this, like, no, we'll let half of all life get snapped, and then we won't arrest the Avengers because we want them to go back in time and bring everyone back. And the big thing with the Infinity Stones is that they only work inside the universe where they were created. So in this desk drawer, you have Infinity Stones from a bunch of different universes, and that's why they don't work. Like, Loki could theoretically use some of these Infinity Stones to make an amalgam Infinity Gauntlet travel back into the main Marvel Universe where he came from. We'll call that the universe that Loki 616 came from, even though technically the MCU is supposed to be a different universe per Marvel Phase 1, Phase 2, and Phase 3. But if he did that, the only Infinity Stone that would work would be the Tesseract, because that's where he stole this Tesseract from. All these other Infinity Stones came from other universes, so they'd be completely worthless. But if it still wasn't clear why there are so many Infinity Stones in this drawer here, it's just because the idea you have all these Nexus events being created, these branch timelines, the TVA goes in, arrests whoever created the Nexus event, then takes the Infinity Stone that they used to do that and throws it in a desk drawer. So you just have a bunch of them accumulating over time. So even though the Marvel movies going forward aren't going to use the Infinity Stones the same way ever again as big plot devices, and they're turning them kind of into jokes here, like these are just completely ridiculous things sitting in a desk drawer. The reason why this scene doesn't completely throw Iron Man and Black Widow's desk under the bus is just because of the idea that they only work in their original universes. So they're not taking away the power of the Infinity Stones, they've just shifted them to another reality where they don't work anymore. If you took all these individual Infinity Stones back to where they got them from, then they would work again. But I think the idea is that a lot of these were collected from branch timelines, Nexus events that created new branch timelines, that they then closed down. So you could not take these back to the universes that they came from anymore because they don't exist. And in case it's been a hot minute since you've rewatched Avengers Endgame, Thanos actually said that he atomized the Infinity Stones after he traveled to his garden planet to prevent anyone from using them again. So he didn't fully destroy them because that's impossible. He merely changed their state to the level of atoms. So they're just imperceptible. And Ant-Man could try to go around and collect every single atom of the different stones and reconstitute them that way. But it would take a billion years to do that. But per the rules that the Ancient One explained to the Hulk, that's how the normal flow of time in the main Marvel Universe continues on going forward like it's supposed to for all the regular Avengers characters. The Infinity Stones are supposed to help control the flow of time. And at the end of the movie, Captain America returns all the ones that they stole back to where they came from, eliminating those other potential Nexus events they created along the way. Like he says, I'll clip all the branches, Bruce, talking to the Hulk. Also, for those of you asking about why old man Captain America did not get arrested, because he went back to live with Peggy Carter in 1942, creating another separate branch timeline in another Nexus event. The reason why the TBA probably didn't arrest him is probably for the same reason Judge Renslayer claims that the Avengers all were not arrested, probably because the timekeepers claimed Captain America was supposed to do what he did, supposed to travel back in time to be with Peggy Carter and then come back to the main timeline. And if that seems kind of suspect, like why would they want him to do that and break the rules in that way and not arrest him, but not want Loki to do what he just did at the beginning of episode one? It just plays into the idea that something is wrong with the timekeeper, something is sinister. It's supposed to feel like they're not really good characters. Also, for those of you asking about the Peggy Carter cameo scene that a lot of people were discussing on social media, no, I do not think that this person in the background of the scene is supposed to be Peggy Carter. There is a woman being arrested by the TVA in the background when Loki's trying to escape who's dressed in a blue outfit with a haircut that seems similar to Peggy Carter. It's not the same outfit that Peggy Carter was wearing. Like, this is a completely different outfit. But just because she looks kind of similar and she's kind of blurry and you can't see her face really, people wondered if it was Peggy Carter. I think this is just meant to be a random person in the background continuing to illustrate that the TVA arrests all kinds of people from different eras all over the place all the time like the douchebag from Goldman Sachs getting vaporized. I think if this were supposed to be Peggy Carter, the creators of the TV show, the cast, and Haley Atwell herself would be talking about it by now. The best example of something like this is Mark Hamill's cameo scene on The Mandalorian Season 2. The minute The Mandalorian Season 2 finale was released, Mark Hamill started tweeting all kinds of funny references to his cameo scene without completely giving away spoilers. Like, have you seen anything good today? Anybody watching any good TV episodes? So had this have actually been Peggy Carter, you would have seen a bunch of official Marvel people talking about it. 
And even though they did get a little confusing with the way they talk about the one single sacred timeline concept, there is still a multiverse, like they've sort of wound the what they consider to be the sacred multiverse into a single timeline, the sacred timeline. It's just that the timekeepers have the TVA hunters eliminate branch timelines that they deem bad. So there are other realities as part of this single sacred timeline all kind of wound together in a single timeline. But they'll continue to explore this and explain how this works in episode two and future episodes. So if it feels like it's still kind of confusing now, don't worry. They'll continue to explain stuff through future episodes. There were also a lot of you asking about Doctor Strange's 14 million possibilities when he was using the Time Stone during Infinity War. The whole idea being that he found the one timeline where they were able to beat Thanos and that involved their time travel plot. So the funny thing that Judge Renslayer is talking about here, like the Avengers were supposed to go back in time, that's why they weren't arrested. The idea is, is that the Avengers had actually done something different, tried some different plan in those 14 million. They would have created another Nexus event, creating another branch timeline that the timekeepers did not want to exist in the TVA would then have stepped in to shut it down. So like I said, Tom Hiddleston did confirm the series would continue to explore the whole Wizard of Oz aspect of this, like the darker implications of this idea that the timekeepers deem what is sacred and what is not sacred. Who's really behind the curtain? Who's really pulling the strings here? Because they definitely do not seem like good people. And just because they are moving past the Infinity Stones as big plot devices in Marvel Phase 4 doesn't mean that they won't ever reference them again. So for instance, we have the Eternals movie coming up later this year, and you have the idea that the Celestials in the early history of the MCU would go around the universe gardening things, growing, experimenting on things, creating the Eternals, creating the Deviants, and when they were doing that, they would use Infinity Stones to aid them in their tasks, like you have Eson the Searcher using the Power Stone to cleanse this planet that he deemed the experiment had failed on. Okay, time to start over again. We'll just wipe the slate clean and try over. So we'll probably see some references to the Infinity Stones again during the Eternals movie when they're explaining the backstory, the creation of the Celestials, and the creation of the Eternals. Just an example of how even though they're not going to be a really big deal going forward, the Infinity Stones themselves are still a big deal, technically. One of the very few replicas that I allowed myself to buy was a full-size replica of the Infinity Gauntlet after Infinity War came out. Although it took so long for them to make that, that I actually didn't receive it until after Avengers Endgame came out in theaters. My full Loki episode 2 video is going to post Wednesday just like normal. There's a special new Spider-Man teaser that was released sometime recently. I might do a video for that tomorrow. Make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss any of the episodes. And congratulations, just some guy with a mustache. You're the giveaway winner from my last big Marvel video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for my full Loki episode 1 video and click here for my Loki episode 2 trailer video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys tonight.